No. <laughs> oh my God. Get ready. Get ready to go out. Get ready. Oh man, this is so blurry. Everything is so blurry. I'm gonna put the light on. Stupid thing is um. So I gotta go out. To my job center. I'm so tired. I am so tired. I'm so tired. Oh, it's 9.42 a.m. I don't know what time it was when I started. Uh, and I started re recording. I'm so tired. I am so tired. This lighting sucks, I will admit, it sucks. I have been neglecting myself. <laughs> yes, I've been neglecting uh, my welfare. I am not in a good... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, emotionally stable or psychologically healthy place. Uh, isn't it strange that we live in a time where people are so focused on themselves? Where is social consciousness? Where is... Uh, the value of living life for the greater good. These days, people are. I was I was listening to that audio book. Um, what's it? The Human Magnet Syndrome by Ross Rosenberg, and he was talking about this section where in the um, 60s they had this utopia building project, and in the 70s or something, uh, people started to focus on. Um, actualizing themselves and self-care. Apparently, like uh, with the 80s and 90s, the people have become increasingly narcissistic, the culture, like people are moving away from the sense of social obligation to actualizing themselves, you know? <clears throat> so he, he uh, referred to some books I might mean, get, you know, which, are, which were, these authors were talking about this kind of sociological change in America and perhaps in the rest of the world as well, where people are moving away from this, uh, the greater good to what's in it for me. Um, and uh, hence, you know, we are all incredibly, so in a way, this self-help, self-care, kind of thing is kind of narcissistic even though you know even though it's looking after yourself it is still narcissistic it's it is uh, focused on the self i think uh, the true i think the cure to this problem is to actually develop a an other focused social consciousness um you know uh, instead of uh, because we are in an economic system that is very rewards competition so people are uh, conditioned rewarded to be competitive to be um, you know not re to see others as commodities objectify people as units to be you know you know to be used to further self-interest so 
So the cure to this narcissism problem is the shift in cultural values and uh, you know towards more social consciousness and also um, to reinforce character traits of honesty, fairness, uh, and not reward um, dishonesty, duplicity, uh, which is what you know, which is which is the kind of character trait you're going to have to develop in order to survive in this very competitive culture. You know, that rewards those kinds of traits. Mm. Um, yeah, so there is my uh, so yeah, you know, it's, it's a problem. It is a problem. Oh, I've seen this video. I haven't seen the whole video by a uh, YouTube user called Claudia Bolin. She was talking about like how. She turned 23 and like how all her peers they are um, finding it hard to you know save up money to you know buy a house or a car or whatever and that uh, her generation the people are you know so their their struggles are different you know like if you were like maybe in the 90s or 80s you had a legitimate expectation that you would find suitable employment and you would be able to you know create a life for yourself but the economic conditions are such that a lot of young people and and people like me who are outsiders <laughs> Uh, are finding it very hard to, you know, and also other people as well, older people, whatever. Uh, it's very hard to uh, find a job. It's, I mean, lots of people live at, uh, live in their fa you know, family houses or, or sh you know, whatever, share accommodation, because it's hard to uh, gain the uh, long term suitable employment. You know, if you're young and starting out, the world is not uh, we're going to be very uh, it's not going to be a very friendly place it's, it's like a cutthroat environment and um, you know, it is not, it's not a good uh, situation we have here you know the economy mainly economy creates a culture of uh, autonomous self-interested competing units which breeds narcissistic tendencies if not outright pathology in people And the reason my breath today is it just seemed like it's, 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 it's a bit smaller, like, you know, when I go out in the morning, is it because of the cold? Or is it because I'm fat? Because a couple of days ago, I was like, oh, my breast size is nice, but then today is like, what the fuck? Is it, is it because it's like, uh, you know, is it shrinking? <clears throat> oh, wait a minute, that's not it. Is it, is it? Yeah, I don't think it's, maybe it's a, something with the bra, I don't know. My diet has been really bad. It's really, really, really not consistent. Lack of consistency. I feel like my whole life is like out of control. You know, I lack control over my life. I lack control over my life. I've been getting lots of audiobooks now. I love, I love, the, I love listening to the audiobooks because I, I would really want to read a lot of books. But the thing is, I find reading to be very difficult because I find it very hard to concentrate. 
So when I listen to an audio book, it's like I'm, I'm getting what the information is. You know, it's like, so it's like <clears throat> you're, just, you're sitting with someone and someone else is reading the book and you're listening to them. So it's like you're getting the information from the book. It's just that you're not doing the work of actually reading and processing the information in your head, you know, through that visual form. You're, you're processing the information in an audio, in an auditor, auditory form. So the information is still being conveyed. And, you know, but, you know, I, you know, I would like to also develop my reading, reading comprehension skills and writing skills. I, I feel like I have to, I, I can be a writer, like I feel like I've got the spirit <laughs> or soul of a writer, but my writing craft, the use of language, the, the, the actual trade of writing, I have to develop that. Uh, but I think I have the, um, what that, that essential ingredient, I know I'm, I'm, I'm sort of uh, tooting my own horns as they say. Uh, but yeah, you know, I feel like I have the potential to be a good writer because I know how to say things. Uh, I can definitely make good arguments in a very passionate, maybe rhetoric, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Line 53. Oh, shit. I didn't uh, brush my hair today. Oh, look at all this hair. Man, fucking hell. It's depressing. Well, you know, I didn't. Usually uh, in the morning I, I do the hair thing so I, I get the hair out. Like, you know, I, th I think you lose hair every day. It's like a it's normal, I think. Uh, but, uh, oh, it's blurry. It's blurry. Uh, but uh, I didn't. Uh, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot, man. Oh, this hair here. Look at that. Because I, I usually do this in the morning, so I got the hair. Look, I, I, I get all the, um, you know, the hair which is falling out. Yeah, my whole life is so disorganized. It's like, it's like one big mess. <laughs> It is one big mess, yes. Hopefully I can get some organization into it. Oh man, I'm putting all the hair on my CD player. I mean my DVD player thing. Oh, oh my god, my blood is stuck. So I'm just wearing this thing, you know, just uh, normal. Oh. <gasps> My blood is stab. <laughs> blood it, blood it. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I'll be going, and uh, hopefully it won't be too much of a. Hopefully it won't be too much of a bother. Oh God, what the fuck? Oh, that's better. What? Why is it like that? <sighs> Anyway, no. <sighs> yeah, later. Uh, okay. Okay, folks. This is how I look. Uh, eh, it's not bad. Uh, I like this. It's good. It makes my hips look a bit bigger. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. It's the uh, you know, normal thing. Uh, yeah. <gasps> this is the French view. I thought my um 
a little bit more fat in there because I, I, I ate food, <sighs> lots of bread and it's pretty good actually. I, I ate the whole grain bread, which is a very good bread. It's got a lot of those, um, what do you call that, K kibbled, kibbled something, you know, like the grains and uh, whatnot. <laughs> So, uh, it's a gloomy day. It's a gloomy day. Uh, so, I don't want to lose my weight of weight up today. So. 65.5, yesterday it was 64. So it's like. <laughs> my mom's looking like uh, talking on the phone. Anyway, no, okay. okay. So I finished the uh, session. I'm going to go to the and I'm going to go home. Uh, I called my mom, so I have to go in. Yes. Eleven fifty-nine a.m. So I usually would have started that recording at uh, twelve, twelve p.m. Anyways, I'm back, and I got these two books delivered in the mail. Mail, <laughs> the Rational Mail, by Rolo Tomasi. What a name, Rolo Tomasi. Uh, this, this is about the manosphere. And this is his other book. The Rational Male Preventive Medicine. Preventive Medicine. So this must be the, the law book. This must be the, <laughs> the, the medicine book. See the colors. So is it. Um, I, I've been listening to the audio version of this book. I still haven't finished it. Um, I thought it was interesting, so... <laughs> the Paradox of Commitment. The concept of commitment is a fantastic utility for women. Men can be simultaneously shamed for not sticking to a commitment that benefits them and still be shamed for steadfastly adhering to a commitment that doesn't. <laughs> so... The fit... The... the Fero what is the fero the pheromonal beta the pheromonal beta oh so oh this is this is the interesting plate theory uh that's basically what that is um it's like you're having so many uh he's basically advising men not to commit to any uh, relationship when they're in their 20s and early 30s um, so he's saying that you have to figure out you've got to first become financially stable the, the commitment is something he's saying you should only do when you're in your you know 35 or 40 or when you're established um, so pl spinning plates means like you're having many many different uh, relationships going on at once and he's saying that um, don't lie to the women you're with just tell them uh, uh, I am uh, I, I don't commit to people <laughs> so anyway this is this is basically like a, an encapsulation of the manosphere thing and um, why would I be interested in it uh, you know is uh, I don't know I'm just interested in how these relationships I mean basically this is the this and he's sort of presenting the opinions of probably uh, he, he create he pro provides criticisms of uh, uh, you know, feminist men or something uh, the beta male so uh, it's I just I don't know I, I, I'm, I'm interested in what they're thinking I, I you know I don't like it does, this is not going to uh, apply for me because I'm, you know, well, I'm a trans person and, and you know, uh, you know, anyway, so, 
I feel guilty and ashamed now. I feel guilty and ashamed. I feel guilty and ashamed. Um, so, uh, so I'm gonna, uh, you know, I went, I went to the thing. I gotta reset this computer. It's, uh, yeah, I've been leaving a lot of, uh, anyway. So, uh, I will sign off for now and I will, uh, yeah, next time, yeah, 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 no, yeah, because I, I love men and I love women too. So, um, for me, you know, I feel like I tend to see both perspectives, so I'm, I'm not sure anyway. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Don't listen to me. I'm crazy. Um, anyway, all right, so later.